Uh, this is the second presentation on convolution. In the first one, we basically show that convolution actually worked. So this is the convolution equation up here, which looks fairly complicated. Um, but really in this presentation, what I want to focus on is why convolution is used. And one of the situations where it's used is when it's difficult to actually model a system. So it's difficult to actually come up with the difference equation that describes a system. And it's much easier to obtain the system impulse response or to measure the system impulse response. And one situation where this occurs is in audio signal processing, whereby uh, an audio signal an audio signal um, is uh, we need to apply some sort of an effect to the audio signal to make it sound like it uh, was played or recorded in a different venue. And music bands do this all the time where they record an audio signal in um, in a studio, so the, a studio environment, and they wish to make the signal that's been recorded, make it sound as if it was recorded in some live venue. And um, one way of doing that is to take the audio signal, the dry audio signal as it's called, uh, and pass it through a system which models the behaviour of the uh, live venue. So the system is a live venue. And the output of that will then be, well, it should sound as if the audio signal um, has been played uh, in the live venue. So, we c so it should sound as if the audio signal was recorded in live venue. That should be the output of the system without actually having to be in that live venue. If we can model the system, well then this should be the case. If we have an audio dry audio recording, pass it through our system model, so let's put model up here, uh, the output should be an audio signal which is recorded, well sounds as if it was recorded in the live venue. Now we could build a, a difference equation model of lots of live venues, but it's much easier to just simply make a recording of an impulse in these live venues. Now from an audio perspective an impulse is just a large bang so something like this. So that loud bang is played in the live venue and a recording of the impulse response is taken. So if we just try to visualize on a plot what the impulse would look like if we've got amplitude versus time the impulse should look like a sound like a loud bang and then lots of silence and what we'll get out of the system the output of the system which will be the system's impulse response will be that loud bang with l little reflections so if you can imagine the bang hitting off walls and we get reflections back from the loud bang, depending on how far away all the walls of the venue are, we're going to get all these little reflections of the loud bang. So if you can think of an echo, um, that's what we we kind of expect. Okay. So now, so rather than having to build a complex model of, or using a difference equation to describe a system, we can just use the impulse responses of 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 any venue that we want. And the beautiful thing is. There are already lots of impulse responses available. So I have one on my computer, which I'll just load in now. It's just a recording. Uh, wa so I'm going to use WAV read to read in an impulse response from a church. And this was simply obtained by making an imp uh, a loud bang in a church and recording the sound that was produced. Um, so we can plot the impulse response of that church. Let's just bring it up. There's the impulse response and we see that's the original impulse. And these are the reflections of the impulse against all the walls in the church. Okay. And now the sampling rate was 16,000 so basically these impulses lasted about half a second. So switching back, um, we can now play the impulse response of the church as well. So I'm just going to listen to the impulse response. So this is the sound that was produced 
in a church when an impulse was made. Okay, so hopefully you heard that. And now I'm going to make a recording of myself. Uh, so that's just going to be my dry recording. And what I'll do then is use my convolution technique in order to in order to create a sound that sounds as if I was speaking in the church. So first of all I'll do my dry recording. I'm going to sample at 16,000, the same rate as my impulse response. I'm just going to do a three second recording. Um, so let's do that. Now what did I do wrong there? That oh, should be WAV record. Okay, let's try that again. Test for convolution. So there I've made my recording. Um, let's just make sure that I can play it back. Test for convolution. Okay, that worked fine. Now what I'd like to do is convolve um, my input, so that's my dry recording, with the church impulse response. And the result should be um, as if I had spoken in the church. So that's working away, and that's basically, that con function is an implementation of the convolution equation that we had on the, the on the uh, previous slides or on my drawing board and let's listen to that now and see if it sounds as if I was speaking in a church test for convolution test for convolution Okay, hopefully you were able to hear that, and that's how convolution can be used.